Well, good morning, children, and welcome to Tabernacle Cardiff Sunday School. Now, let's begin our time together, as we usually do, by coming to the Lord in prayer. Uh, so let's make sure that we're sat nice and still. Let's have our hands together and our eyes closed. Our gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that it is your day. And Lord, on this, your day, we can be found here in Sunday School to learn about you. Lord, we pray that you will draw near to us wherever we are, Lord, and help us uh, to understand what your word teaches us today. Uh, be with us now, we pray, and bless us. Uh, for we ask all these things in our Saviour's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, let's start Sunday School as we usually do. Uh, by singing our Sunday School prayer, uh, which is Father in this place of worship. Today in Sunday School, uh, we're going to continue uh, our series on judgment and deliverance. Uh, now, for those of you that were with us uh, last week, uh, you remember that we looked at a new character uh, called Samuel. Uh, and we learnt about uh, when he was a little boy, uh, when he was living uh, in the temple uh, with the priest uh, Eli. Uh, now, this week, we're going to look at Samuel again, um, but as an old man. Uh, so if you have your Bibles with you, uh, could you turn with me, please, to the first book of Samuel? It's coming up onto the screen now. Uh, chapter 8, and we're going to read from verses 1 through to 7. So that's 1 Samuel, chapter 8, verses 1 to 7. Uh, so let us hear the word of God. And it came to pass, when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges, over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after Lucre, and took bribes, and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together, and came to Samuel, and to Ramah, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed, unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. And may God uh, bless to us that portion of his word. Well, let's now sing our first uh, Sunday School uh, hymn together. Uh, and it's this one, uh, one that speaks of uh, today's uh, day, the Lord's day. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made. He calls the hours his own. Let heaven rejoice, let earth be glad and praise surround the throne. Thank you. 
morning children and welcome to Sunday School. Have you heard the saying, pride comes before a fall? It's usually said to people who are showing off and it's a reminder that when people are showing off, they often fall flat on their faces. Well, this saying actually comes from the Bible, from Proverbs 16, verse 18, which says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Well, in today's lesson, we will see how the children of Israel have become too proud to follow God and his ways. So we take up the story, they're now in the promised land. God has given them many godly leaders from Moses, Joshua, and now they, he's given them Samuel as judge over them, godly Samuel. And this is the same Samuel that you might have heard of who grew up in the temple helping the priest Eli. And Samuel had devoted his entire life to serving God and his people. And he had a number of roles. He was a priest in the temple, offering sacrifices to God. He was a judge, administering the law and sorting out disagreements between the people. And he was a prophet or God's messenger giving the people God's word and guiding them in the ways of God. Samuel was a good man, but now he was old and decided he would have his two sons to take over the role of judge. So he made his two sons judges over the people of Israel. But his two sons were not like Samuel, they were crooked and they would take money for favours and they didn't judge fairly like their father had done. In Samuel 8 verse 4 we read, Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel and said unto him, Behold, thou art old and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. So they're saying, we know you're old and we don't want your sons as to take over from you. We want a king. Samuel is upset at this news because he knows this is not God's chosen way of government for his people. Samuel had ruled over the people. He, he hadn't lauded it over them like a king. He'd served them. He had humbly served them and traveled far and wide to see them and help them. He had worked very hard. Samuel worshipped the true and living God and had encouraged the people to do the same. But he did it without pomp and without ceremony. Instead of appreciating this different way of government, the children of Israel wanted to copy their neighbours and exchange the messenger of the heavenly king for an earthly king. So Samuel prays to God about this and God comforts Samuel and in 1 Samuel 8 verse 7 God says to Samuel, they have not rejected you Samuel, they have rejected me that I should not rule over them. God can see their hearts and he explains to Samuel, this is not the first time that they have been proud and rejected me. He says, the people have been rebellious from the day I freed them from Egypt. 
and how they have forsaken and rejected the true and living God to serve other gods, just like they're doing now. In verse 9, God tells Samuel to listen to what the people are saying, but also to warn them about the terrible consequences of this if they, if they choose and go through with this choice of having a king. God tells Samuel, protest solemnly, seriously with them, reason with them, try to explain to them why this is a bad idea. And this is exactly what Samuel does. He explains the problems that would arise. He says, don't you realise a king will want many of your children as servants to work as horsemen and cooks in the palace? You're going to need to give lots of food to the king and for the palace that you are growing. All these people in the palace are going to need feeding and you're going to have to provide that food. The king will want to take the strongest of your children as well as your donkeys and sheep to work in the palaces. Samuel had never done any of these things, but this is what is going to be required for a king. In verse 18, Samuel even says to them, You shall cry in that day because of your king, which you shall have chosen, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. What a solemn warning he gives to the people. But in verse 19 we read, Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they say, Nay, but we will have a king over us that he also may that we also may be like all the nations and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles can you see how sinful the people are they refuse to listen to samuel they're not listening they are ungrateful for all the years of service that he has spent looking after them they owe him so much, but they don't care that this request is wounding him and hurting him. This is what sin is like. It's always unkind and selfish. It says, I must have my way. I know best. It's never content with its lot. It always wants more. So the children of Israel have taken for granted all of God's blessings and they choose not to listen that God is not going to hear their prayers. Instead, they assume they're going to have all that they've got at the moment and a king. But the Bible warns you cannot have God and mammon. So Samuel pours out his heart to God and tells, them, tells him what the people have said. And in verse 22 we read, The Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice and make them a king. Have you heard the expression, be careful what you ask for, because sometimes you get what you ask for, but you don't realise all the downside, all the other things that are attached to it that you're not aware of. So God leads Samuel to a man that he should make king. And this person's name is Saul. Now, when 
Samuel tells Saul that he's going to be the king over Israel, he protests and he says, no, I don't want to be king. I don't want that role. And then later on, Samuel calls all of the children of Israel together, all the tribes, and he goes to show the man out of the tribe, the smallest tribe, this is going to be the man to be king. But Saul is nowhere to be found. He's gone to hide. But God reveals where he's hiding and the people run to fetch him and they find that Saul is very tall and he is head and shoulders above all the people. And the people are very happy and they think, this looks like an impressive young man. We want him to be king. And they are very happy and they shout out, God save the king. Before sending the people away, Samuel explains to them that Saul is going to be their king. Samuel is such a godly man. He even gave lots and lots of advice to Saul and gave him a book, wrote down all the advice in a book so that he would try to help Saul be a success, even though he knew it was the wrong thing to do. He didn't just say, well, you're making a terrible mistake. Up to you, off you go, make all the mistakes you possibly can. He tries to save Saul from making lots of his mistakes. But in 1 Samuel 12, Samuel does remind the people and he says to them, I've made him king because of your choice, not mine. And he reminds them that he was not like a king. He had never taken money or been influenced by money. He'd never asked them for lots of riches. He had served them, but now things were going to change. And the people say, you're right. You have served us. And yes, we, we recognize that God can be a witness to this, that you haven't been taking money off us. You've been a good man, but now we want a king. It's almost calling upon God's judgment, isn't it? And they, they're oblivious to their rebellion. But despite all of this, Samuel is such a good man, he even promises to pray for them. And for a while, all seemed to go well with the new king. But in next week's lesson, we'll see that things begin to unravel. They go wrong for the king and for the children of Israel and all because of their disobedience and pride before God. Oh dear children, there are so many lessons we can learn from this terrible mistake. How foolish we are when we think we know best and we ignore God's laws. Truly, pride comes before a fall. We are all guilty of this from time to time. What can we do when we find ourselves getting too big for our boots and getting all puffed up? Well, we can go straight to God and to tell him how foolish we are and to turn from our sins and to say sorry to God and to ask him to forgive us in the name of Jesus Christ. Be careful what you ask for. When you see other people getting on in life or not following God and prospering and thinking, oh, I want some of that as well. That's what the people were like, weren't they? They could see what other nations had. 
not realizing what they had was so much better. All that glitters is not gold. It appears all bright and shiny to begin with, but very often that is just the appearance. But the reality is quite different. The last thing to note from today's lesson is that God never forces anybody to follow him. He lets people choose for themselves. He wants us to voluntarily follow him and worship him. But what foolishness to think I must have all these worldly things glittery, shiny things on offer in the world and to grab that with one hand, not realising we're losing the blessing of God in our other hand. Or may we be like Samuel's and learn from the children of Israel. Well, until next time. Goodbye. And uh, that was today's lesson at Tabernacle Cardiff Sunday School. Uh, it's now time uh, for this week's memory verse, uh, which is coming up onto the screen. Uh, and it's this one. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. And that's 1 Samuel chapter 8 and verse 7. Okay, and I just wanted to uh, draw your attention to uh, one word in there. Uh, that uh, first uh, word in the second line, hearken, you can see it there, uh, hearken unto the voice uh, of the people. And the word hearken, uh, for those of you that don't know, means to listen. Okay, so what this verse is telling us is that the Lord said unto Samuel, listen um, unto the voice uh, of the people. Uh, so he's saying, listen to what they say. OK, so in case you didn't know uh, what the word hearken uh, meant, uh, you do now. Uh, so that's a good uh, learning uh, point there from uh, this verse. Uh, OK, so uh, let's uh, say this uh, all now together. Um, I'll say it slowly, so please do uh, say it with me. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. And that's 1 Samuel chapter 8 and verse 7. Well, let's take some time now to have a look at this week's uh, memory verse picture. Uh, and there you can see um, our memory verse from 1 Samuel chapter 8 uh, and uh, verse 7. And there in the background you can see uh, an image uh, of uh, a ruined uh, croft uh, from up in the highlands uh, in Scotland. Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, a croft uh, is kind of like a little house. It's a Scottish term for a little house or a little cottage, um, I suppose. Um, and so there is a ruin of one of those uh, up in Scotland. Uh, I think we went there a couple of years ago now um, uh, up to Scotland. Uh, so there is um, that uh, image uh, with our verse from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8 uh, verse 7 uh, when the Lord uh, is speaking uh, to Samuel. Well, let's take some time now to have a look at this week's take home sheets. Uh, you can see uh, up on the screen uh, that it's Lesson 90, uh, so please do make sure that you have Lesson 90 at the top uh, of your take-home sheets. Uh, they are now uh, downloadable in one of the two usual ways, either by clicking on the link uh, in the description box 
uh, or by going to uh, the church's website. That's tabernaclecardiff.org. And, and there on the homepage, uh, there's a link to Sunday School uh, take-home sheets. Okay, so let's uh, have a look now at the uh, infant's uh, take-home sheet. And there you can see uh, an image uh, of Samuel uh, anointing uh, King Saul. Um, and uh, there you can see those words uh, at the bottom, Saul reigned. Okay, so that's the uh, infant's uh, take-home sheet. And then if we uh, take some time now to have a look at the juniors and the teenagers uh, take-home sheet. Again, we can see that same uh, image. Uh, you can see uh, there's our memory verse uh, from this week, from 1 Samuel uh, chapter 8 and verse 7. Uh, you've also got uh, your Bible readings, uh, which we trust and we pray that uh, you do uh, each week. And we pray that they are of uh, good use uh, to you as you uh, grow in what the Word teaches us uh, week by week. Uh, and also you've got then uh, some questions uh, as well. OK, so there are the two take home sheets uh, for this week. And we look forward to receiving uh, a photo uh, of your take home sheet. Um, uh, by next Wednesday uh, for inclusion in next week's uh, gallery. Well, speaking of take-home sheet galleries, let's now have a look at your take-home sheets uh, from last week. Well, that was a, a lovely uh, take-home sheet gallery, wasn't it? With some lovely uh, colours used uh, in uh, the colouring and some good answers uh, to the questions uh, as well. So uh, thank you very much uh, for taking the time to send those uh, in to us. And as I mentioned before, um, if you've not sent in a take-home sheet before, then you'd be very welcome uh, to send those in to us at our usual email address of school at gmail.com. Uh, and if you could get those to us by around Wednesday of uh, next week, uh, then uh, that will uh, be able to be included in next week's gallery. Well, let's now sing uh, our closing uh, hymn together. Uh, and it's this one. Uh, it's a Sunday school favourite. I don't think we've sung it uh, for a little while. Um, but some rich words uh, in it. Uh, Teach me thy way, O Lord. Teach me thy way. Thy gracious aid afford. Teach me thy way.
Well, it's been lovely uh, to have you with us here today at Tabernacle Cardiff Sunday School. And I trust it's been a blessing to you too uh, to be with us here today. Well, it's now time to close Sunday School. Uh, so let's come to our Heavenly Father uh, in prayer. Uh, so let's make sure that we're all sat nice and still. Let's have our hands together and our eyes closed. Our gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, that it is your day. And Lord, on this your day, we can be found here in Sunday School uh, learning about you. Lord, we thank you for what we have learned today, Lord, and we pray uh, that you would help us, Lord, to uh, see our need of a saviour. And Lord, we pray that you will help us uh, to turn away, to repent uh, from our sins and to look to the cross of Calvary and to the saviour of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, we pray for each and every one of us, Lord, wherever we are. Lord, we pray that you will keep us safe and from harm. And Lord, we would ask now as we uh, go through this coming week, Lord, that you will uh, be with us uh, and uh, bring us back safely to Sunday School next Lord's Day, uh, we pray, God willing. Uh, for we ask all these things in our Saviour's name, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.